Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are adding another video in the miscellaneous series. In this video, we are going to talk about phase change phenomenon that is melting of a solid material under the application of external heat sources. So what we are going to talk about is how exactly this phase change physics is to be incorporated in your COMSOL module and how can you solve a real life melting or any kind of phase transformation problem. Before I start today's video, I would like to tell that we have already talked about another phase transformation where a liquid was going undergoing a phase change into vapor and I will put that particular video in the description box so that you can have a look into that video. Another thing is we have initiated a service where we help you developing your research problem through COMSOL Multiphysics. If you want to avail this service, you write to me in the email ID given in the description box and then I will reply back to you and set a few video calls so that we can assist you developing your problem. So let us proceed with today's problem. So for the for saving some time, what I have done is I have actually noted down all the parameters. Those parameters are taken from console itself. So those parameters are necessary for this particular simulation. So what are those parameters? So those are the material properties and a few external conditions like this is the TF that is the melting point of this particular material. Uh, we will be working with tin as it is done in console multiphysics itself. This is the TH that means the applied hot temperature that is the higher temperature and this is the cold side temperature. So the, this is the mm, solution domain. So what's happening I will just try to explain you. So we have actually taken a solid block and that has two compartments. So the problem is initiated from this assumption that already the melting process started and then again we are putting external heat flow by the application of the thermal temperature gradient and then what is happen, what's it, what is happening the solid part again goes to the liquid part so this solid part fraction will go down and this liquid fraction will go up and we are actually simulating this particular problem. So for simulating this we need to add the necessary physics I have just taken the geometry and the physical parameters and also the materials so the materials is you can say tin solid so this is kept here and the tin liquid so as i was mentioning we have started the simulation from an assumption where already there are liquid tin and the solid tin and that has happened due to as an application of external temperature then again heat flow is taking place and due to this heat flow, this further solid, so this part will again melt and it will mix with this and during melting it will undergo a fluid flow. So let us now add the physics. So we go to the physics, click on add physics and we need to actually work with heat transfer. So we look for an appropriate physics in the heat transfer. So there is something that you, you can see here heat transfer in solids and fluids you have to take this because we have both solid and fluid so let us double click here and it will be added in the model builder window you can see that has been added and we need to put the fluid flow single phase flow we have to put the laminar flow because once it melts it will start flowing under the influence of gravity and also the temperature difference. So it, you can say a kind of natural convection. So initially what we do is we go here and let us define the necessary things like we need to define a temperature. So as I have mentioned we applied a gradient of temperature so this temperature will be kept at TH that is the higher temperature which is defined in the parameter this one TH 508 Kelvin and we need to take another temperature boundary condition 
it will be at the right hand side and this will be TC so again this TC is defined in the parameter list now what I need to do is I need to have a phase transformation and because of this phase transformation we need to put this particular part in this physics Yeah, so we need to put the phase change node. So right clicking on the heat transfer and we click on the phase change interface and we have to define where is exactly the interface is located which will be here. And we also, we, we have to ensure that where is the solid located and where is the fluid. So the solid is the right hand side and the fluid is the left hand side. So here we actually define the initial fluid space and the initial solid space and as you can see this is the interface. So from this interface and the definition of solid and fluid we have actually defined all the initial and boundary conditions like those are the initial conditions where is the fluid, where is the solid and where is the initial interface. And these two, temperature 2 and temperature 1 are the boundary conditions. And this node, this is a phase change, phase transformation interface that we have defined. And you can see those equations are the equations, those are coming from the phase change physics. Today I am not going in details of those equations. You can have a look. We will make a complementary video on it where we exactly try, we will try to define those physics. Now you can see here we need to define the phase change temperature and the latent heat and in the parameter list those are defined. You can see the latent heat of fusion is this delta H and the melting point is Tf which is to be added here. So phase change interface so this is the mel uh, not this one it will be here latent heat and this will be tf or the temperature at the interface it will be the melting point temperature that's why we are putting the melting point temperature at the interface so in the uh, heat transfer in solids and fluids in this physics most of the things are defined. Now we come to the laminar flow. So in the laminar flow, one thing we have to do, we have to include the force that is gravitational force because a force is acting here. So in the right, right clicking, okay, we don't get this gravity here because in the updated version of COMSOL, we have to include gravity from here. So we have to check on include gravity and it will include gravity. And you can see uh, once you include gravity, uh, it has automatically taken this gravity. No, it has not taken. We have to click here so that we can define where exactly the gravity is acting. Now what we need to do, this will be a closed space, there will be no inflow, no outflow and as there is no inflow and no outflow, what we need to do is we need to define a pressure constraint somewhere in any corner. So let me define it here. So this pressure constraint will help because we don't have any inlet or outlet here. And I have talked about this particular topic in some of my videos. You can have a look into those videos. Now I guess most of the things are defined. Let me recheck once again. So the laminar flow is defined. Fluid properties. We have given it from the material. So my materials are already chosen. You can see there is a cross. On the material, why is it coming? I'll come to this. Uh, initial values are okay, 0, 0. All will be well because we don't have any inlet, outlet. 
gravity is acting here and pressure point constant we have added now what is there this heat transfer and laminar flow are coupled physics and that's why what I need to do is in the multi physics I right click and put non isothermal coupling so once we put non isothermal coupling so it will ask for those properties like from the uh, specified density and it is asking for reference temperature so this has to be taken as user defined and a property will be needed here that is dynamic viscosity it is asking for for solid there will be no dynamic viscosity but as it is asking we can put some value but what I guess is the laminar flow will be here it's uh, only this phase now there is no yeah there is no issue with the material with the multiphysics everything is defined mesh is already defined I right click on temp on study and get the initial study steps so that we can see the result properly so I have taken the initial steps it will take some time yeah it has come now what I do is I can run the simulation so it may take some time to complete the simulation I guess so let us wait for a while and let me announce meanwhile we have initiated a service where we help you to develop your research problem and if you want to avail that you have to write to me in the email id given in the description box there is an error let me check it quickly let's see the error so there was uh, the error is okay the last time step is not converged so we had a warning let us check it so the warning is saying gravity is acting but the bosonos approximate okay so we forgot to give this approximation we have to check it here so in the non isothermal flow we have to check this particular thing now yeah now I guess it should compile let us see it will take some time let us wait for it yeah the simulation is completed and you can see what's what has happened so this is the temperature profile let us check the other see this is the velocity profile you can see now this entire part is liquid because this much section has been melted and that's why this has become liquid and due to this temperature gradient there is a natural convective flow you can see this is this arrows indicating the flow direction so we have this natural convection here and you can also see the contour of the temperature those are the by default results which are available when we uh, do the get initial value steps and also mesh deformation is plotted here but this is not required for the result purpose this is how the pressure contour is located in the fluid zone so now this is this much is the fluid zone so we have simulated for this much time so if you actually increase the temp the time scale then there will be more solid which will be coming to the liquid phase and you can try this particular thing so today I stop here before stopping I would like to request you to subscribe to our channel because it will give us more motivation to create videos